Unusual situation. <laughs> I've grown by 10 inches like that. Um, and uh, I hope everyone out there can you hear just about out there? We'll do our best. Um, this is a most unusual gallery spread as it is over different levels and in different corners and different corridors. But I think it's a very exciting gallery, and I'm delighted that Denise and Deirdre have invited me to, to uh, inaugurate it. Um, I was there for the opening of the Bad Art Gallery. And I think Denise feels that I'm some sort of a lucky talisman in that regard, so <laughs> hence my presence here, presence here tonight. I was thinking, um, given where we are, um, so close to, to Leinster House, um, that <laughs> this is not, not really about politics. Um, but I remember the, the, the story about the Duke of Leinster, um, when he was the Earl of Kildare, Duke of Leinster, and he decided to build Leinster House on what at the time was a marsh on the very unfashionable south side of Dublin. And he was asked, how are you going to do this? And why build there? Everyone else is living in Mountjoy Square and places like that. And he said, where I go, fashion will follow. So I, I think uh, we had a, a, a gallery called the Bridge Gallery on Ormond Quay, and that was on the north side of Dublin. We had a, a gallery called the Bad Art Gallery in the Heart of the Liberties. Uh, which was sort of outside uh, the general area of, of the, um, the political elite. But Denise and Deirdre have made their way close to that. <laughs> <laughs> and I, uh, although I loved the Bad Art Gallery, um, I, I feel that she's made a terrific, a brave and terrific move in coming here. Uh, witness all the crowd. Um, I think having an exhibition here on a Thursday means the weekend starts now. <laughs> so people can drop in on their way home. Um, so delighted to be here and to see some old friends, uh, part of the group collection, which is uh, part of the inaugural exhibition, and also Porrick. And we'll talk about Porrick in just a moment. But to see uh, Lucy Doyle on, on the walls, and there are many more. Uh, Aileen Johnson, I won't mention everybody, Aidan Hickey, Adam Pomeroy, Alison Kay, Geraldine O'Reilly, Hugh Fraser, James Braun, and so on. Look, there are so many here. Uh, and uh, looking at the, the uh, list which is to be found on the doorways card and it says and many many more <laughs> how many more can you have i don't know but all of them are artists of exemplary quality i remember the origins of the bad art i mean the bridge i presume because it was near a bridge mm -hmm. yes it was simple <laughs> enough the bad art was all to do with the rha and the people the wonderful people they turned down and uh, Denise's idea was that the only people that would be exhibited in the first show were people who'd been turned down by the RHA, and all of them were absolutely great. I'm glad to see that Bad Art has followed us to the new location in terms of the spirit uh, that started the gallery. Um, particularly thrilled to be asked to talk a little bit about Ed Porrick McCall. Uh, I know that he was living in San Francisco. I've studied his biog, so I know this, and he was obviously inspired by all the great sights there are to be seen around San Francisco Bay, but there would always be a worry when you're painting well in a place like that, you come home and somehow your muse is gone. If you forgive this, he wondered had he left his art in San Francisco. <laughs> <laughs> Irresistible. Anyway, he comes home um, and he finds himself in Athol, and uh, the majesty that he probably found on the west coast of the United States, he found suddenly in spades in Athol, whether it was the cliffs, whether it was the, the, the majestic sea, the Atlantic Ocean which is ever changing, uh, even the peat bogs, and a vibrancy of colour that has inspired him. Um, he chose not to live there, he chose to live in Delgany for some reason, given the Garden County has so many pristine uh, views, such a bountiful county in terms of uh, inspiration, uh, but I can see why he turns to the West uh, for his, his painting. I suspect, you know, I've been to the West many, many times, and I seem to spend most of my time there 
on pretty soft days. Um, and what happens to me on a soft day, you're looking at a landscape and it just kind of melds into multiple shades of grey. Uh, for Patrick, that seems to just form uh, the backdrop through which the vibrant colours of, for example, uh, the, the, the rusting roof of an old shed uh, suddenly becomes vividly uh, available to us as the viewers of his canvases. Um, he says he doesn't go in for detail. Um, it's the shapes, the, the way the, the houses, the sentinels, as he puts it, which I think is a, a very good title for his work tonight. They act as, uh, if you like, upright monuments to the generations that have gone. Almost 200 years of emigration. Once again, we're blinded by it. Hopefully it'll be a, a, a passing phase like the other phases were. But those empty houses, those empty outbuildings, a testament to all of those who've gone before. And what I like about the paintings is that the, the lack of detail is all the more to bring us into our view. If you're looking at a landscape, you see those shapes, the outbuildings, the white buildings, sometimes those rusted roofs, sometimes no roofs, uh, stone walls, all of that kind of thing. Um, you don't know what's going on as you view them from afar, but you have to guess at all the stories that uh, are untold, but tellable, uh, were you ever to find out the, the history of each individual building. But you don't need that. The, the magic is there, the romance is there, the mystery is there, and the sadness is there. Um, so I found in coming to these paintings um, that I, I could transport myself back. I also feel, looking at the work, that uh, Porik sees the world more vividly than the rest of us. Um, as I say, when I see uh, a landscape, I, I may notice the shapes and the colours, but not as Porik sees them. They seem to just take on another life, an inner life. Uh, for me, demonstrating the, the, the beauty of the laws of physics, and I'm a scientist after all, and how what the artist does on the canvas uh, translates the light that hits that canvas into uh, the beauty that we behold. Um, it's, it's a great pleasure to be here tonight on this very auspicious occasion, the first of many, many exhibitions, um, but we could not have started on a better note. And I commend to you all the work of Porek, and thank you, Deirdre and Denise, for inviting me along to the office. Appreciate it. Well done. Trying to follow. Uh, <laughs> uh, to speak. Um, I was. Uh, I just want to say a few thank yous. I want to dear and Denise for bringing me along with uh, into this new gallery. I mean, it's an amazing space, and it's. it's, it's even louder, please. Oh, uh, <laughs> I'm very honoured to be associated, to be part of, of the gallery. Um, and I'd like to say thank you very much to Pat as well for those were I always find it very, very strange to have some to, some speak about my work, and, but also be able to pull out things that. Um, I mean, what Pat was saying is pretty much, you know, what I would say as well. So for him to be able to, sort of, you know, I suppose, take Trump paintings and uh, you know, be able to sort of say it back to people and say this is what he sees in the paintings. That's that. It, that's it means an awful lot for me. That means people are getting what I'm trying to get across in the work. So I'm going to say very, very little else except thank you everyone for coming along, and particularly for, for those faces I see over year after year. So for the support I've been given and that I get from everyone here over the years. Thank you very much and enjoy the evening. One thing, one thing I, I wanted to say, because I, I saw a little piece that uh, Corey did about his own work, and he's a, a, a painter who cons constantly wants to learn, and he says that he likes to paint at least three progressive pictures every year. And what he means by that are pictures that when he looks at them, he says, my God, I could not have done that last year. So the quest you all have tonight, as you decide what painting to buy, is which paintings has he done this year that he couldn't have done last year? Because they're the ones that you want to find. Yeah. All right, so with that, once again, I, I thank you for being here and uh, enjoy the exhibition. Thank you.